Hello and welcome to Talking Books. I'm Jill de Villiers. If you want to achieve something in life, you have to know what it is what you want. But often this goes by the wayside in the hurly-burly of daily life. Here to help us get in touch with what we truly want in life and make sure that we get it is Sarah Arnott. She is managing partner of the Woodburn Man Leadership Science Institute and her book is That Further Shore, Turn Your Dreams Into Goals and Make Them a Reality. Sarah, welcome and thanks for joining us. Thank you. Sarah, um, I think most of us have New Year's resolutions. Every year at the beginning of the year, we have big dreams and we say things like, I'm going to lose weight this year. I am going to get fit and healthy. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to stop smoking. And a few months down the line, it's all gone. Why is that 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 happens? Well, it's a great question. And the, the, I think the answer is that if you just say, I'm going to lose weight, you haven't really done anything that's going to put in train that actual process of losing weight. I think losing weight is a great one to choose because so many of us work on it every year. It's always at the top of it, especially because I think one puts on most of the weight between the 1st of December and the 15th of January. <laughs> so it's always a good one to choose. You've got to put proper goals in place. You've got to think also if those are the most important goals, the biggest things you can achieve or the most important things that you can achieve in a given year. Okay, so but you've done this yourself. Um, you're also a coach. Yes. And you work with um, CEOs and really high level people in the business world. And you've spoken to them. Have you found that they have a problem as well, setting proper goals for themselves? Apart from setting goals for your company, because it's of a course. different thing. Uh, I think. Oh, I think, <laughs> yes. CEOs definitely <laughs> trouble with setting goals for themselves because they're usually so embroiled in what they've got to do for the business and they have so little time. So that key thing of prioritization also plays into it. Um, making sure that you understand what's important, and I talk about that in the book. There's a number of things that really matter. One of the first is to ground yourself in the life that you're in now. You know, I, I sometimes say that if you always wanted to be a rock star when you were a kid, but you couldn't actually sing, it's not much good trying to achieve your childhood goal because you're never going to be a rock star. Even if your parents, even if your parents told you you were a lovely singer, but you know you can't <laughs> sing. It's not going to happen. But grounding yourself in where you are now and saying, what's, what's the most I can dream for myself now? What haven't I done that maybe I wanted to do? Or if my life's really chaotic, if I am that CEO, maybe there are important things to me like spending more time with my children. How do I find a way in the next year to prioritize that and make sure that I actually achieve it, not just that it goes onto a list that gets forgotten about? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about you and the way that you have set goals for yourself because you have many things that are important in your life. You've just finished an, um, um, an MPhil degree. You've just written a book. You're a competitive eventer. Tell us a little bit about how you set those priorities every year. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's the key. That's absolutely the key is that I came across this process three years ago, about three, maybe four years ago, and I saw it in a few different places. I referenced the sources in the book, and I decided to do this little process of thinking about where I am, setting my important themes, putting down objectives, and then putting in place the process that would get me to those objectives. And to my absolute amazement, I achieved my childhood dream here in South Africa, which was to ride on a horse in an equestrian competition for my country. So that was a big childhood dream that I never thought I could achieve, achieve. And I sort of thought, wow, that's really amazing. Let me try this again. So I wrote it down again, and I put the process in place the following year and set out everything I'd achieved, uh, achieved everything I'd set out to do. And the thing is, I realized it's almost incremental. The more you do it, the better it works. And the power is in picking out the things that really matter and really focusing, focus is an important word here, really focusing on the process that will take you to the outcomes that you want to achieve. You also talk about SMART, uh, yeah. setting goals that are SMART, so that's specific, um, measurable, uh, measurable, uh, achievable, um, yeah. um, realistic, realistic, and what is the T uh, again? Timely. Timely, yes. okay. So um, that's also goals that you set in business, but it's not something that you always tell yourself to do. Um, why is it important to be so specific about what you want? Well, there's two things here. Mm -hmm. One is I do believe in smart goals, mm -hmm. and I think most of the goals that you set should be smart. The measurable part's really important because you can't, if you can't measure it, you can't see how far you've come. So, in fact, all of all of the elements of smart are very important. But the but the thing is, sometimes you want to blow it out of the water. So. 
I'm not saying you should always blow it out of the water. If you're a really busy mom and you're a working mom and you've got three small children at home and you're just, you know, paddling to try and survive and your goal is just to get half an hour of exercise a week, bravo and stick with that. That's a smart goal. If you're at a stage in your life where you're trying to do something big or special, then I also love the idea of stretch goals. Set your smart goals, your realistic goals, and then take the ones that are most important to you and multiply them by 10. You might not ever achieve that, but you may achieve way more than you ever thought that you could with your SMART goals. And I'll tell you why I think this. Mm -hmm. Because when I first wrote this book, I wrote it as an e-book for my, my friends and my clients. And I asked them after a year, I said, did you do it and did it work? Half of them said, yeah, I did. And when I look back, it seemed almost easy to achieve what I'd written down. But half of them said, Mm, I couldn't actually decide what three themes were important and I kind of gave up, it was too hard. So you know what, our brains don't like doing this stuff. Mm -hmm. They don't like necessarily sitting down and, and really having to think about what we want and set these objectives. Mm -hmm. However, the people who did do it, there's this, um, a lot of research shows that just writing stuff down makes it happen, makes it come true. So I sat there when I was writing this book and writing the, this published version and thought, how can I help people to make bigger dreams come true? And came up with this notion, or again, not original, because I've written, read a lot about goal setting, and one of the ideas is this concept of stretch goals, mm -hmm. that if you stretch your goals and you make them bigger and more challenging, they are part of that is likely to come true. If you, set, if you set the level at 10, you might achieve 10. If you set the level at 100, you might not achieve 100, but maybe you'll get 50, which is way more than the 10 you originally set. Oh. In your book, you use Arnold Schwarzenegger as an example. I do. He was quite inspiring to you. <laughs> Much to my surprise. <laughs> if you'd asked me would I find, um, you know, the Terminator fascinating, mm -hmm. I don't think I'd ever watched one of his movies. And then I read a piece, an interview um, that was written, that he'd done, um, it was a report of an interview with Tim Ferriss. Tim Ferriss wrote The 4-Hour Week. And he is, um, and he puts out these podcasts and he, um, he summarised that. Um, summarized his interview with Schwarzenegger and I was really surprised this you know smart funny self-deprecating person and I thought I must find out more and about that time I saw his um, autobiography so I bought it and read it you know what it's fantastic and you have to think that somebody who grew up in an incredibly poor environment in a small town in Austria became the Terminator became governor of California and married a Kennedy has got to be pretty special. Mm -hmm. And in his book, he talks a lot about this point of process. That yes, you have to figure out what you want, but the most important thing is figuring out the process that will get you there, the behaviors, mm -hmm. the everyday small stuff that gets you to your results. Mm. That makes me think of the time that I decided to give up smoking. Yeah. And um, so for many, many years before that, I had also every new year, I had said, I will give up smoking this year and then it would stop. But it was only when I put a process in place, I will do this, I will do that and that and that and over such a period. And within three months, I had stopped smoking and never touched a cigarette again. So that, that, that is an example of, of how that actually works if you set that process. And it's a wonderful example. I might oh. use it in my next, <laughs> in my next talk because mm -hmm. if you've got something to concentrate on, you were trying to break a habit. It's really, really hard to break habits because we have to put new habits in place. Mm -hmm. But if we give ourselves a process that we can concentrate on, so, so I use the example of exercise. You know, if you want to run a marathon and today you're a couch potato, putting I want to run a marathon as a goal is just unattainable. You can put it as a goal, but you've got to figure out what's going to get you from couch potato to marathon runner. And it might be those very small steps of I'm going to get off my couch and exercise for 20 minutes to begin with for a week. And then I'll add five minutes to the 20 minutes. And then I'll keep growing it from there. But you're putting this little process in place that you can concentrate on, tick off. You know, Schwarzenegger used to put everything, write everything up in chalk on the wall in the gym. And then he would tick off when he did the reps. He calls it the reps. And he would just go through the reps and tick them off. I love that. I'm, I'm preparing for a big competition at the moment. And I've got my list of things that I need to do every day and that my horse needs to do every day. And I tick them off. And it's very satisfying. And we'll get there. Oh. And by doing that, you actually make time in your day to do these things. Yeah, um, because you prioritize them. Mm. Because days can run away with you if you don't plan them properly. Isn't that what happens to us? Mm -hmm. We get stuck. And this is this great concept of focus. It's why I want you to pick three themes, 
maximum of three goals or outcomes per theme because you can focus on that and you can put something in place and say, you know, every week I'll tick something off on that. Every month when I look at my month, people are different. Some people need something every day, some people need something every month. But I can look at my plan and say, did I do it, did I not? If I didn't, why not? How do I make it easier for myself to do it? So in the book, uh, we don't have much time left to speak, but you have five step process. Yes. And it's very important to do every one of those steps. Can you give us a broad outline of, of your five step process? So the very first step is to ground yourself in this reality of who you are now. And to do that, what I suggest is you write a review of the past year. Now, we're in September. So we could say write a review of the past nine months of the year so that we can set some goals but to achieve before the end of the year. So you write your review and without being too hard on yourself, I find we can be quite hard on ourselves, but writing the review of what went well, what went badly, and I guide you through that process. That's step one. You actually have you you have your example of your own yep. uh, one, yep. and it's it's quite detailed. I would have expected it to be quite brief. Okay, I d did this, I did that, but you're quite uh, detailed in in your assessment of what you've achieved and what went wrong. Yes, because it's a chance to be reflective about it, and one of the one of the points of doing this review of the year one is to ground you in where you are now, and the other is that we often move forward so fast that we forget to look back, and reflect on where we're coming from and dig a bit deeper as into why these things went the way they did. So I put it quite a reflective piece about my review. In fact, of it was my review of 2017 that went into this book. Um, once you've done that, I suggest that you choose three themes from your life. And when you have a busy life, it can be really hard to say, oh my goodness, just three. And I mean, I'll give you an example. I chose to prioritize part of my personal life this year instead of maybe a more obvious ambition because I felt it was more important. So it doesn't have to be grandiose themes, but it does have to be the things you want to focus on so that you keep on reminding yourself, this is important to me. So again, for a mum, it could be her relationship with her children. It doesn't have to be that she's got to go to work and knock the ball out of the park every day. She might be wanting to think, I need to give better quality time to my kids. Then, uh, having chosen your three themes, the third step, which for me is the most powerful st step, is that you sit down with a cup of coffee, a piece of paper, and a pen, and you brainstorm all alone for five or ten minutes. You set the alarm on your phone, and you write down the best possible outcomes you can imagine for these themes. And what you find is that you kind of go into a state of what they call flow, and your brain will come up with things you weren't thinking of originally. And you let it do that. There's, it's like a brainstorm. Mm -hmm. There's no right, there's no wrong. You just think of those outcomes. So the next thing to do is probably to go and have a cup of coffee and have a little break, give your brain a rest because it's just worked mm -hmm. very hard. Then you come back and you circle the outcomes that look most interesting or most important to you. Those become your objectives. And then you sit down and you write your plan for the year and you say, how am I going to reach those objectives? What processes and changes and habits do I need to put in place that take me from here to there? Oh, and by the way, are there any I want to multiply by 10? <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, that, that is fantastic. And uh, we've come to the end uh, of, of our slot today. So if you want to find out more about how to do this, you have to get the book and read it. The book is called That Further Shore. Turn your dreams into goals and make them a reality. And my guest is Sarah Arnott. And thanks so much again for thank coming you. in. Thanks very much. And thank you for watching. And that was it for this edition of Talking Books. See you again next time.